If you're anything like me, you're probably all too familiar with that frustration of juggling a never-ending to-do list and feeling like your day slips away without making any real progress with your work, let alone having time for a social life, the gym, or, dare I say, just relaxing. Especially, but not only, if, like me, you're your own boss and in charge of how your workday looks like, having a clear workday routine helps immensely to maximize both productivity and work-life Balance. So in this video, I'll share with you a practical five-step guide on how to create the workday routine that works for you and that lets you systematically incorporate both your work and your personal life into your daily doing. Let's dive in. Step number one, define your things. Ask yourself, what are the things that you need or want to get done every week or every day? And this for sure includes eating and sleeping. And then for me, for example, also meal preparation, working out, grocery shopping, social time with friends and family, self dates and working. And for you, if for example, you have a dog, that probably also includes dog walking. Or if you have certain hobbies that you have to attend to twice a week, for example, that also goes onto that list. And when you've defined your things, it's time for step number two, priority sorting. Now I want you to take the things that you've just defined that need or should be done in your ideal week and order them by priority. Try to think of this as your Maslow's hierarchy or pyramid of things that should get done in your ideal week. Week. And the exact order of this depends on your life. On the lowest level, should go sleep and eating in general. And I'm not talking about sleeping enough or well or eating well, just sleeping and eating in general. And then on the next level, you decide if you put your work or like me, your health or your family, whatever is applicable to your life. So if, for example, you are an employed person and have to work at least 50 hours a week and your work is also very important to you, either because you just really like your work or because you're dependent on the paycheck every month because for example you're supporting your family that probably work is gonna go on a lower aka more important level on your pyramid. If however you're like me a very health conscious person and are self-employed and have the ability and the freedom to prioritize your health including for example workouts, healthy eating, meditation, sleeping enough, that kind of stuff into your life then probably that's gonna go on a lower aka more important level in your pyramid. And then when you have your pyramid of priorities it's time for step number three calculate the time needed for each thing. Ask yourself how much time Time do you minimum need for your most basic needs? So how many hours of sleep do you need? How much time do you need for eating? Grocery shopping, which you need to do at some point. Cleaning, which you also need to do at some point, unless you have a cleaning person. And whatever else is on your lowest level of your permit. For me, for example, I know that I need seven and a half hours of sleep every night, plus 30 minutes of bedtime to get myself sleepy or to actually fall asleep. And then my meal prepping, my eating, my grocery shopping varies every week because it's very flexible because I live alone and I only have to take care of myself but usually in some I need at least one hour every day for eating cooking and grocery shopping and this does not include eating together with people or eating out or working while eating you should not do if you can but actually only the raw time that I need to take care of my food. And then depending on your hierarchy, move on to the next level. If this level is work for you, as an employee, you probably have your fixed work hours every week, at least a minimum that is in your contract. As a self-employed person, deciding how many hours of work you need every week is probably a bit more difficult because we could work 24 seven. But I want you to actually ask yourself how many hours per week you minimum need if you would be working very efficiently. For me, like I said before, that is not work because I'm a very health conscious and self-employed person but for me that is my health. So that includes things like working out, meditation, taking walks, things like that. And for that I usually calculate about one and a half hours every day because I usually work out for around an hour and then I try to take a 30 minute walk on average every day and then go one level higher again. For me that level includes self-care, my social life and relaxation time and for example I try to fit at least two to three social nights in my ideal week, each lasting typically one whole evening, whether that's two hours or four hours. And I try to have at least one night a week for myself, whether that's self-care, a self-date, or just Netflixing. And this also includes things like showering, doing a face mask, things like that. And then my next level is work. If I've decided how much time in a week I need for my health, my social life, and my life with myself, I know how many hours in a week I have left for my work. And I think this type of prioritizing is especially necessary if you are in charge of your work hours because 
whether you're an employee or self-employed, especially nowadays when we can work from home, many of us tend to work too much. And I think it's very important to set boundaries for ourselves because if we don't take enough care of our health and our personal life, we will burn out at some point, or at least we'll probably be unhappy, at least in the long run. But like I said before, if your priorities look different than mine, just do what I just walked you through the other way around. But keep in mind that very smart saying that health is wealth. So depending on your definitions of health and wealth, try to keep that in mind whenever possible. And then when you've calculated the sum you need for each thing that you want or need to get done every week or day, it's time for step number four, assigning time slots. And do that again along your pyramid. For me, for example, I need seven and a half hours of sleep and my current clock makes me sleepy at around 11.30 and I wake up after seven and a half hours plus 30 minutes of buffer, so at 7.30 in the morning. Then for eating, because I do intermittent fasting where I fast for about 14 hours, I have breakfast at around 11 a.m. I have lunch whenever I'm hungry, but typically that's around 2 p.m. And then I have dinner between typically 7 and 8 p.m. Then next on my list is my workouts, which because it's high in my priority list, I like to do first thing in the mornings, even though I'm also most productive in the morning. But like I said, my workouts, my health is more important to me than my work, and that's why first thing in the morning, it's time for working out. I do that for 45 minutes to an hour every day. And after that, I get ready, do my self-care that is necessary every morning, and then I get to work. And then my social life is pretty flexible. I can do it pretty much any time, but I tend to do that in the evenings and or on the weekends because I prefer working during the day and usually there are more fun activities to do at night, I think at least. And then when I've decided at what time of the week and or the day, I'm gonna take time for my health, my social life, and my personal life, I decide how to allocate my work tasks. Here I find it very helpful to look at my work tasks and decide which types of tasks I have to do every day. For example, creative tasks versus organizational tasks, easy versus hard, or tasks that I like to do versus tasks that I have to do. And then what I like to do is to assign certain projects, because I'm working at a couple of projects at a time, which most people do, to a certain day of the week, so that within a day my mind does not have to switch too much between projects, which research shows is energy draining and makes us less productive. So try to pick a day of the week for one project, pick another day for another project. And then especially if you have recurring tasks within the different projects, I find it very helpful to find a specific time of a specific day for that recurring task. And at what exact time of the day or the week you put that task depends on when you're most productive and the type of tasks that you have to do. For example, I am most productive in the AM or in the late afternoon. So I tend to put my hard or creative or unliked tasks in the AM, my organizational and or very easy tasks right after lunch, and then my medium liked and or creative and or hard tasks in the late p.m. Of course, I can always switch that around, but that is my typical work week routine and it helps me so much if I just stick to that routine because by having that routine, I save up so much mental energy, which keeps me from suffering from decision fatigue because I don't have to decide every minute of the day which thing I'm gonna do next. And then when you've assigned your project and your tasks of that project to your time slots, it's time for step number five, break scheduling. And before you click out already, because you say that you don't have time for breaks or yeah, you know you need to take breaks, but you don't care. If you wanna be productive and time efficient, you need to take breaks. And I know this sucks, if you like your work or you have a lot to do, I feel you, but it is so important. And I struggle with this so much still to this day. But what helps me a lot to force myself or to bring myself in a nice way to take enough breaks is to schedule breaks about every 30 to 60 minutes, depending on what works for you. And then in these breaks, which can be five minutes or 50 minutes, whatever works for you, I like to use that time productively so that I don't feel unproductive. And also I get things done, which saves up time that I can then use for fun things. For example, if I'm having a good day and I'm actually taking enough breaks, I usually work for about an hour, then I already feel my concentration diminishing. Then I look at the time and then I realize it's been about an hour. And then I get up from my desk, maybe stretch a little bit or do something in the household. That can be meal prepping, unloading the dishwasher, cleaning the toilet, things like that that take typically a few minutes, take my brain off my work and let me move around a bit. And then after five minutes or maybe 10 minutes, I go back to my desk and keep on working for another hour. And I did not really used to take breaks up until 
a couple of months ago, except for lunch break. But then I was forced to take breaks in the afternoon because I had to go to physical therapy twice a week. And I realized that I got so much more done in these days where I quantitatively worked less because I had an hour of physical therapy, but qualitatively, output wise, I got a lot more done than on days where I hour wise worked more. And that was the proof that helped me immensely to finally get myself to take enough breaks. If you tend to struggle with sitting at your desk and getting your mind to focus, have a look at my video up here where I share how I get myself to not procrastinate and to stay focused on the tasks that I need to get done. So this is how I created my, for me, perfect workday routine that helps me so much to not burn myself out, but also to get things done. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like, hit subscribe if you want more content like this and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.